Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, you're going to be watching part two of infancy. Now, part one covered pain and the infant, but um, very long chapter, lots to cover. So this is going to be part two, maybe even part three series. But part one is called something like pain and care of the infant or pain and the infant patient. So that's part one. This is part two. We're going to continue um, infancy. Now, in part one, it was audio only. Obviously, this part two, visual as well. So before we get started, as always, guys, I'm going to ask you to please like this video. You know, you're going to love it. Just like it now. So you don't forget, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done so already, tell your classmates, your nursing instructor, um, friends, coworkers, anyone, you know, that may possibly in be interested in nursing, tell them about my channel, help my channel grow, please. And I will continue bringing this content your way. Let me know what you think about, um, the information, the content being delivered in the comment section. So we're going to continue where we left off the first six months. Look at what it says. It says human milk is the most desirable, complete diet for infants during the first six months. Now, remember infancy is from birth to 12 months. I don't know what I wrote here. Let's see what I wrote. I wrote, don't introduce solid foods until six months of age, never before. Okay. That's what I wrote. So it's very in, uh, important. And the reason why we really don't start introducing, we really don't give the solid foods before six months of age, their body cannot handle it. They need milk and preferably breast milk from the mom. Let's keep going. Um, the Academy of Pediatrics on breastfeeding, they recommend that it doesn't say some, it says all infants, including those exclusively being breastfed, receive a daily supplement, a daily supplement of 400 IU vitamin D beginning the first few days of life. Why? To prevent rickets and vitamin D deficiency. Take a look at this top, what it says. Infants, whether they're breastfed or bottle fed, I put a star next to this, so you know it's important, do not require additional fluids, especially water or juice during the first four months of life. Excessive intake of water in infants can result in um, water intoxication, hyponatremia, fluid volume overload. Remember, their bodies are very small. They don't need water. They don't need juice. That's very important to know. Take a look at this administration of iron supplements, some important things to know in regards to iron. Ideally, iron supplements should be given between meals. What does that mean when they say between meals? The stomach's going to be what? Empty. Yeah, that's what they mean. Okay. So between meals or in the morning before the patient even has a meal, we want to give it on an empty stomach. Uh, liquid iron supplements, they're very staining. They can stain the teeth. So if it's liquid, um, you're going to put that dropper towards the back of the mouth. Okay. Older kids, if you're giving iron and it's liquid, you're going to teach them to drink it through a straw so it doesn't stain their teeth. You're going to avoid uh, administration of liquid iron supplements with whole cow's milk or milk products. Why? They bind to the iron and they prevent absorption. It counteracts the effects of what you're trying to do. Teach them that iron is very staining. That's why we teach them if they're older kids, we have them sip it through a straw so it doesn't stain their teeth. That's why if they're little babies, we go ahead and put that dropper all the way um, in the back of their mouth because we don't want it to stain their mouth. So teach them that it's staining, teach them that it can cause their stool to turn a very dark color. Otherwise they're going to freak out. Something else about iron is very constipating, very. So you got to make sure you have the patient drink lots of fluids and have lots of fiber so they don't get constipated. Caution the parents not to switch to a low iron formula or whole milk. Remember, remember guys, whole milk decreases the absorption. These both are poor sources of iron and it can lead to iron deficiency anemia. In older children, follow liquid iron supplement with citrus juice. Here's the thing, um, the sorbic acid and citrus juice really aids in the absorption of the iron. So that's very important. Nursing alert, avoid administering more than 400 IU of vitamin D. Nursing alert, 
warming expressed milk in the microwave decreases the availability of anti-infective properties and nutrients. Not only does it do that, that's number one, okay? All of those wonderful nutritional properties that are found in breast meat milk, it really decreases that amount. That's number one. And number two, it is very easy to burn that baby's tongue by giving them something that was in the microwave because when you feel the bottle on the outside, it might feel just a little bit warm or even cool, but in the middle, it's burning and scalding hot and you can burn the baby. So you have to teach those parents to never microwave liquids and put it in uh, microwave like the bottles to give to the baby. Breast milk should never be thawed or rewarmed in a microwave oven. To thaw the frozen milk, this is what you do. You either place the container under um, a lukewarm bath or you can place it in the refrigerator overnight, but you never microwave, very important. An acceptable alternative to breastfeeding is commercial. Look at this, iron fortified, not low, low iron, iron fortified formula. Similar to human milk, it supplies all nutrients needed by infants in the first six months of life. Unmodified cow's milk, low fat cow's milk, skim milk, and other animal milks and imitation milk drinks are not acceptable as major sources of nutrition for infants because of their limited digestibility. They cannot digest those types of milks appropriately. Increased risk of contamination and lack of components needed for appropriate growth. So number one, the best milk, the milk that we prefer that infant to get is going to be the breast milk. But if they cannot get the breast milk, they have to get something that is a commercial milk. It needs to be iron fortified milk. Kids shouldn't, babies shouldn't even be getting uh, whole milk until they're what? One years old. Okay. Whole milk causes iron deficiency anemia. Why? Because it decreases absorption. It causes iron deficiency anemia in infants, possibly as a result of occult GI blood loss. Pasteurized whole, um, whole cow's milk is deficient in iron, zinc, and vitamin C, and it has a high renal solute load, which makes it undesirable for infants younger than 12 months old. Guys, in how many ways are they going to tell us that we don't want to give animal milk to infants? They've said it in five different ways within the past two pages. Very important. Now, what did I write here on the side? I wrote cow slash whole milk one year. Yes, we don't give it until they're one years old, 12 months. Nursing alert. Dietary fat in infants younger than six months old should not be restricted unless on, a, unless on specific medical advice. If they are an infant, you don't worry about them getting fat. They need that fat for growth, okay? Substituting skim or low-fat milk is unacceptable because essential fatty acids are inadequate and the solute concentration of protein and electrolytes such as sodium is too high. Honey. Honey should be avoided the first year of life because of the risk of botulism pacifiers should not be coated with honey to encourage the infant to take it. That's a big no-no. The addition of solid foods before that four to six months old is not recommended. Feeding solids to young infants expose them to food antigens that can produce protein allergy. New peanut guidelines from guidelines from the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends early introduction of peanut proteins for infants who are at highest risk of allergy, and it should be done four to six months of age in an effort to decrease the risk of severe lifetime allergies. And this is different from what we used to teach before. So, guys, you know, as we do more research and better, more evidence is produced, we're going to change how we practice. Developmentally, infants are not ready for solid food. The, extru the extrusion protrusion reflex is strong and it often causes them to push out food out of the mouth. Keep, keep Follow me here, guys. Infants instinctively suck when given food. Because of their limited motor abilities, they're unable to deliberately, so to do it on purpose, they're unable to deliberately push food away or avoid food. Uh, feeding. What does that mean? That's a huge choking risk, them aspirating. 
Therefore, early introduction of solids is a type of forced feeding that may lead to excessive weight gain and increased disposition of allergies and iron deficient anemia. Parents should be cautioned concerning the use of juices and non-nutritive drinks such as fruit flavored uh, drinks or carbonated beverages such as soda or pop. That's not necessary. During that infancy stage, all they need, guys, is milk, preferably breast milk. If we can't give them breast milk, iron fortified milk. So we're going to stay away from those juices and the sodas and the pops. Fruit juices are not given during the first 12 months of life. All right, let's talk about the next six months, the second six months, so six to 12 months. During the second half of the first year, human milk or formula, again, should continue to be the primary force, source of nutrition. How many times have they drilled into your head by now that you should not uh, be giving them cow's milk or any other type of milk? What we want to give them is human milk or iron fortified milk. The use of fluoride supplementation depends on the infant's intake of fluoride tap water. If breastfeeding is discontinued, a commercial iron fortified formula should be substituted. That's our second choice after the breast milk. A major change in feeding habits is addition of solid foods in the infant's diet. Physiologically and, development, and developmentally, infants four to six months old are in a transition period. Tooth eruptions beginning, head controls well developed, voluntary grasping and improved eye-hand coordination starts. Let's go over the selection and preparation of solid foods. When do we do that again? six months. Preferably, we wanted six months. Around four to six months, that's when they become ready. But six months is ideally the time that you want to introduce solid foods. Iron fortified infant cereal is generally introduced first. What did I tell you about when you're studying and you see them giving you a timeline? They tell you what to do first or second or last. Pay attention, okay? So the in iron fortified uh, cereal is introduced first because it's high in iron content. We don't want the patient to be anemic. Commercially prepared, ready to serve dry cereals for infants include rice, barley, oatmeal, and high protein cereals. Rice is usually suggested as an initial food because it's easy, easily digested and it has a low allergy content or potential, I should say, excuse me. Cereals such as cream of farina are not used because infant commercial cereals are a better source of iron. It's all about iron during this stage of growth, guys. New foods should be added at the same time? No, one at a time. And the reason we do one at a time, the reason why it's so important is because if the patient is allergic to something, we need to know what they're allergic to. So we're going to do it one at a time. New foods should be added one at a time. Therefore, parents should avoid cereal combinations when beginning new grain because if something goes wrong. We need to know what caused it. Infant cereal, again, it should be iron fortified, may be mixed with expressed milk or water until whole milk is given. And remember, they don't get whole milk until when? 12 months of age. If foods are introduced early, citrus fruits, meats, and eggs are delayed until after six months of age because of their potential to cause an allergy. So if the parents don't wait until six months, so remember that that time of transition is around four to six months. Let's say they wait, they wait, um, they don't wait for the six months, it's a little bit earlier. At least they need to save the citrus fruits, meats, and eggs until last six months, okay? At six months, foods such as cracker or I have no idea what this guy is, guys. I haven't seen this. Zweiback? Zweiback? I have no idea. Somebody, if you know what this is, Z-W-I-E-B-A-C-K. Tell me what it is in the comment section because I'm too lazy. I'm not going to Google it. But cracker or Zweiback can be offered as finger and teething foods. By eight to my... By eight to nine months of age, junior foods and nutritious finger foods such as firmly cooked vegetables, firmly cooked vegetables, raw pieces of fruit or cheese can be given. By one years of age, well-cooked table foods are served. The majority of infants' caloric needs are derived 
How many times have we seen this? Primarily by milk, human or iron fortified milk. Therefore, solids should not be uh, perceived as substitute for milk. Even when you introduce the solids, they still need that milk for growth. It is very important and they need to continue to get it until they're what? 12 months. Once they hit 12 months, once they are one years old, then they can get what? Whole milk. Low calorie uh, milk and food should be avoided in infants and toddlers. They said this before and now they're saying it again. So, you know, that's, imp that's important. Teach them to stay away from low calorie milk and foods. Okay. The infants need that fat for growth. Low calorie milk and food should be avoided in infants and toddlers unless a strict medically prescribed diet is required. Infants growth during this phase is crucial for future development. Dietary fat should be curtailed with great caution. At the same time, it's important to recognize that certain types of dietary fat are unacceptable to infants. They give us examples. You need to know those examples. Fried potatoes, candy, ice cream, cake, cake soda pop, and other sweetened drinks and other um, such items do not constitute There we are. Appropriate amount of fat intake and it could contribute to childhood obesity. They're empty calories. You're going to encourage parents to offer the child a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, including those known to be naturally rich in what? Iron. That is the name of the game. Introducing solid foods. Once food item is introduced at intervals of four to seven days to allow for the identification of allergies, if the child may have allergies, new foods are fed in small amounts. As the amount of solid food increases, the quantity of milk decreases to less than one liter per day to prevent overfeeding. New foods are given, how many times have they said this? I've seen this before. New foods are given alone to allow the child to learn new tastes and textures. And also, if they become allergic to something, we need to know what it was. What was the new food that was introduced? Food should not be mixed in the bottle and fed through a nipple with a large hole. That is very important to also teach um, the parents. Now, guys, I have to run. So... I've got a lot more pages to go. So this is going to be a multi-part series. So just watch out for part two, three, four, et cetera, because there's going to be more, <coughs> excuse me, there's going to be more coming. Let me know what you thought about this video so far, the content that's being provided to you. Please don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website at nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching. You guys will catch me on the next video.